Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord to Jesus. I greet the beloved church with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I invite those that can to stand up in reverence to the reading of the word of the Lord, which is located in the book of Revelations. Revelations chapter 1 from verse 4 onward. Revelation 1 verse 4 onward says the following. Amen. You will be in the project already there. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, their firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and domination forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The church may sit down. The praise group will sing a song.
Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brethren, the Lord has brought us here tonight because surely God has for us a great blessing. God always has something to speak to men. Every time that Jesus, when he was here on earth, fulfilling his ministry on earth, Jesus always communicated with men in a very simple way, in a very clear way. Sometimes he used the things that were around him uh, to speak with men. Sometimes he used nature. Sometimes he used history, the law. Sometimes he spoke through parables. Sometimes he spoke with only his gaze. Sometimes, we, if, if we analyze humanly speaking, even when he ignored a situation, Jesus was speaking to men. Every, all the time, God wanted and wants to speak to men. But now there are situations that many times the multitude didn't understand what Jesus wanted to say. But then when he explained himself, he spoke only to the ones that were closest to him. And what I want to say with this is that in order for us to understand God's project, in order for us to accept God's project, we need to be closest, closer to Jesus. We cannot be part of the crowd. We cannot be far away from the presence of Jesus. We cannot be uh, unaware of what Jesus is doing in the world. A clear example of this is the book of Revelations, in which many times men uses this book in order to bring uh, erroneous interpretation or to bring fear to the world in itself. They have made several movies about the revelations, the end. Hollywood, Hollywood loves it. They love this. And many times, and many times, many men benefit from the things of God. But we don't need this. Man doesn't need anything that's human, anything that is material that comes from man. God wants and He always tries to uh, tries to find servants, that are sincere men, men that, that are willing to hear His voice, men that are willing to heed to His call, men and women and children and elders that are ready to be blessed by Him. And that's why God brought you here tonight, because He knows you. He knows exactly what you need. He knows exactly what you're going through. That's why Jesus came to the world. That's why Jesus went through everything that He went through. Because today, He is the faithful testimony of God. He is the one who knows us. And now God, He uses John. Right? In the book of Revelations, uh, that many times are uh, uh, misinterpreted, misthought. But if we understand that the book of Revelations the altar. Who was the altar? Who? God. God is the altar of the book of Revelations. He is the author of every book in the Bible. The writer of this book of Revelations, who was it? 
John. The Apostle John was in the island of Patmos, imprisoned because he was preaching the gospel for preaching the salvation Jesus. He was imprisoned there in that island. Leaving a moment that was so difficult. But in a moment like this, in which God revealed himself to him, because John could not have had an understanding of Jesus like the one he had. Jesus speaks to man even in the way he is. John knew Jesus, the Jesus as it was described in Revelations and actually in Isaiah. A man that like a dry root. John saw Jesus being uh, being deceived. John saw Jesus being betrayed. Je be saw Jesus being uh, crucified. He saw Jesus uh, f feeling thirst, feeling hungry, feeling cold. He saw his his hair being entangled by the daily life because of uh, the wind and the dust of the desert. He saw his Jesus' feet dirty. He saw Jesus spending the night uh, awoken. He saw Jesus sick. He saw Jesus sweat blood. Uh, sweat blood. Jesus saw Jesus. Uh, uh, John saw Jesus passing by him, carrying a cross. John saw Jesus with a crown of thorns on his head. He saw Jesus uh, nailed on a cross, nailed on a cross, like if like the greatest criminal. The worst sentence that anyone could have received was to be nailed on a cross. John saw this. John saw Jesus dying, but John also saw Jesus raising from the dead. On the third day, he resurrected, and John, John could not have left for us that image of a Jesus, a man, who was a man. That's why in this island, John had a great experience, and the Word tells us here that he saw the revelation of Jesus Christ. John was invited by God to go to heaven, to eternity. He was raptured in spirit, and he saw the glory of God. John saw what God has prepared for us. John saw with his eyes what is and what he was and what is to come. He saw now Jesus glorified. He was no longer a defeated man. Uh, uh, Jesus was ignored by man, rejected by his own people, by the nation of Israel. But now he sees Jesus in his glorified form. What is what is uh, is glorified, the one who was victorious. Jesus is victorious. Jesus King. Jesus Lord of Lords. Jesus uh, speaks to man and decrees our victory. The Jesus uh, like uh, with a voice of many waters. And whenever he speaks there is no bad weather, there is no pain, there is no infirmity that may resist him. This is the Jesus he John saw up there in heaven. And then John writes everything, all of this. He writes. And he asks, now what am I going to do? You write down everything that you see, the seven letters, uh, you write s seven letters to the seven cities, which are the seven churches. And they speak of the time of man and history of man. And you write this from the part of Jesus Christ. 
you're not going to say this out of yourself. You're not going to say that like something that you heard when you were when you were seeing Jesus as human. No, you're going to see what you are seeing here in eternity. The word says that John began to write from the part of Jesus. And it's here in a while that he speaks about Jesus was the faithful testimony, faithful witness. Jesus is the faithful witness. What does that mean? What does it mean to be a, a witness? When you witness a crime or something that you'll be called to testify on in court in front of a judge, the lawyers tell you, hey, say the truth. Say what you saw, what you witnessed. Don't lie. Don't come up with stuff. Just say what you saw. And the judge, when the judge asks you, hey, the judge ask, do you swear to say the truth and nothing but the truth? And you say, I swear. But Jesus, he doesn't need to be asked because he's the faithful witness because he's the one who went through what he went through he speaks of himself Jesus is the son of God God allowed Jesus to go through something that I would never allow my children to go through not even you you would never would allow your son to die for somebody else I'm sure of it it doesn't exist. But God allowed His only begotten Son to die in our place. That's why He is the faithful witness, because Jesus only speaks the truth. Jesus is the truth. He is the path. He, Jesus everything that we need. His word is truth. There's nothing that can go against what uh, what Jesus says when he speaks to men because he's the way fit for witness when Jesus decrees our victory our victory is decreed when Jesus says you're cured you are cured in the name of Jesus it, it doesn't exist any by that will go against what he says there's no one in this world that can question or stop and or interrupt God's project in your life he is the faithful witness and he is on the right side of the Father, interceding for you, because he is victorious. He overcame all things, and he writes more. The firstborn over the dead, he was the one, the first one who died. But you might ask, how many other people died before Jesus? How many men and women that died before Jesus? But it doesn't matter what we begin to count from the death of Jesus because he is the one who died but on the third day he resurrected and through the death of Jesus Christ who, who was the first one to die now we have the right to eternal life that's why he's the firstborn of the dead because the one who overcame death no other man died and overcame death but Jesus but the death we know is our greatest enemy but Jesus was victorious against death and today in Jesus if you open up your heart if you decree that he is your savior if you walk in Jesus you will as well be able to overcome death the death for man in Jesus is our victory because when we died for this life in Jesus we are, be, we are able to reach eternal life in the presence of God. That's why he is the firstborn of the dead. Because Jesus opened up uh, a way for men. In Jesus, from that day onward, there was a project of salvation started for you tonight, for your family members. And he says more. the prince of the kings of the earth the one who loved us and in his blood washed us from all our sins only Jesus has power to redeem our 
the sins. Only Jesus. When Jesus poured out His blood, when Jesus shed His blood, represented there the Holy Spirit, representing what God does in man's life. When man is able to reach Jesus, and the Holy Spirit enters into his life, and makes man aware that forgiveness is only through Jesus. It's not because we are good, or beca because I'm a good father, or because you're a good mother, or a good son, or because a good uh, professional, or because you pay taxes, or because you're a citizen. No. No, you only are able to uh, reach salvation for your sins through Jesus, from not through anybody else. But he says he was he made us kings and priests to his God and Father. Why did he make us kings? Did you know that you are king? Why are you a king? What is the function of the king? The king has uh, dominion over all things. He has governed things. But today in Jesus, man who was slave, man who was slave to sin, man who served the vices, man who was uh, imprisoned with the world, with sin, to evil that is upon this world, now we are kings in Jesus. Because today, sins, the vices, the drugs, the evil has no dominion upon our lives. Because in Jesus you are king. Today you have dominion. Today in Jesus you are victorious. In Jesus you can reject sin. In Jesus you can reject the things of this world. In Jesus you can reject infirmity, illness, the vices, the drugs. Because today you have dominion. In Jesus, in through His death, because He is the Son of God, He is the one. He He is the Almighty. Today, you are King. What controlled you in the past does not control you anymore. Only if you allow it. Only if you allow uh, slavery to come back into your life. But from the point in which you met Jesus and you saw Jesus, God gave you authority to reproach any action of evil, any action of the or the enemy of our souls. Now have governance and dominion over those things. Take possession of this. Take possession of this. When somebody tells you you're a loser, you're worthless, don't don't accept it. No, I'm a king. Jesus made me king. Jesus made victorious. I can do all things in Jesus. Decree this in your life. Do not accept people pushing you down. Don't allow people to dismiss you. Jesus uh, overcame illnesses. He took away our pains. He took them away when he died. And today we're kings in Jesus. We're priests. Why are you a priest? What is the function of the priest? What is the role of the priest? You would go in the presence of God and would present there the requests of forgiveness of the people of Israel. What, that was the role of Israel. He would go ahead of, uh, in the presence of God with the requests of forgiveness. You would present to God inside of the tabernacle and the temple. But today we're priests in Jesus. Today, you can go in the presence of God and place uh, your prayer at His feet, your request. You don't need anybody else to do this for you. It doesn't have to be a holy man, a leader, a pastor. It doesn't have to be a religious leader. No. Now, you were made a priest with Jesus. But sometimes you may ask, Hey, I'm so um, unworthy. I'm not worthy to be in the presence of God. It, this doesn't exist in Jesus. You have the right. Because when Jesus died in that cross, the veil of the temple was raped. Uh, and what we didn't have the right to see, what we cannot participate in Jesus, now we are priests. 
today you can come into the presence of God with your plea, with your cry, with your pain, with your suffering, and uh, be attended, receive it, the attention of God, whatever you are, at home, at work, driving your car, you can pray to the Lord. And in the name of Jesus, God will answer your prayer. Because Jesus said, whatever you ask to the Father in my name, the Father will, gi the Father will give you an answer. Once uh, a new convert had accepted Jesus, and you know the first love at the beginning of his walk in the church, and he was a truck driver. And he had participated in a seminar where he heard about pleading for the blood of Jesus, about prayer. And he was driving. The truck was uh, loaded. And he was going down a hill. The truck lost uh, brakes. And he felt that the truck was with the brakes um, not working. The more he tried to brake, the more the truck accelerated. It was downhill. The truck was heavy. And there he began to pray to the Lord. And there he began to cry to the Lord, Lord, I'm a new convert. But I believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. And the more he said, the more he prayed, he remembered the prayer. He remembered the power of the prayer. He remembered the class that he watched. He remembered that there is power in the blood of Jesus. And the more he prayed, the slower the truck came, uh, drove. And when he came down the hill, nothing bad happened to him. Because the Lord sent his angel and gave him the deliverance. Because there is power in the blood of Jesus. He didn't have to call the pastor. He didn't have to call the deacon or the worker. He didn't have to do any of it. But he directly spoke to God. And God saved his life from death. My brother, it is possible because Jesus was victorious on our behalf and now we are priests and kings through Jesus. And when John, John saw those things, it is interesting that when John was in heaven, he heard the voice of God and he saw the presence of God. And the word tells us that when it happens, John turns and he sees Jesus in between seven lampstands, gold lampstands. So when the Lord speaks to you, when you hear the voice of God, you need to turn. Because every time that God speaks to man, every time that God reveals to man, every time that God wants to communicate with man, it's because wants to change your destiny. God wants to change your luck. God wants to change the judgment of death that is upon every man. Because when Adam sinned, every one of us received the judgment of death. But in Jesus, because he is the firstborn among the dead, now we have the right to uh, flee death. Because the judgment that was upon man, Jesus can change. He can give us a judgment of eternal life. But you need to want this. You need to turn. You need to turn to the Lord. Because God wants to speak with you. And when you do this, and you see Jesus glorified. Because what God has prepared for us, to those who are seeking in their lives, uh, they seek holiness in their lives. For the holy ones, when I say holy, I'm not saying that you are holy. Like man, when you hear people say, uh, holy man, no, th that's not what I mean. Being holy is not you speak slowly or uh, walk slowly. And it's nothing to do with being holy. Holy is when you set yourself aside to hear the voice of God. Because the word tells us that faith comes from hearing and hearing the voice of God. So when you hear the voice of God and you see the glory of God, you need to turn towards the one who is the owner of all things. 
That's when God speaks to us during the service. He manifests among us. And here in our service, He made us kings and priests for, for God His Father. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. That's why in every service we have here, to Jesus, to Him, is given all the glory. Every song sang, every adoration. When the children sing, when we sing and we pray, you do this for Jesus. Because a high price was paid and now we are thankful for our salvation, Jesus. Amen. May God tonight speak to your heart, giving, clarifying His project, which is a very simple project. You don't need to do many things. You just ne need to allow God to guide you. Sometimes people are get worried. I'm going to become a Christian. I'm not going to be able to do many things. I'm not going to be able to do this or that. Don't worry about this. Allow God to take control of your life. And you see that none of it will you will miss any of it. Because when Jesus calls men into our presence, He supplies everything. And God calls us to be to live in His presence. He is the one that supplies everything for us, because He is our God provider, and we have not lacked anything. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now you need to rest in Jesus. Allow Jesus to take control of your life. You need to see how good it is to rest in God. May God bless us. Let us hear a song.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. to God. I invite everyone to stand up. We're going to have a word of duration to the Lord. Lord, we glorify your holy name. We know that you live in our hearts. Thank you for your presence tonight. This word that brings comfort to our heart. How good it is to serve your Lord, to be saved, to go deeper in your Holy Spirit. Lord, we glorify for our salvation because one day you called us and chose us. That's why we praise you in the name of Jesus. I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who was, who is, and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the Jesus that we present here. This is the Jesus that man needs to remember. And it's to this Jesus that we need to give all the all the praises to the glorified Jesus to the true Son of God and the Lord has shown as we were praying for the service it sh has shown uh, an adolescent and in a few moments she has been seeking a place to I'm going to read the song the, the revelation really literally and then I will explain the song there is an adolescent and in a few moments she has been seeking a place to hide uh, is if she was uh, hiding on a tree, on a tree, a uh, uh, house on a tree, but now the Lord has revealed to her a uh, secure refuge, and in this shelter she 
feels secure. There's no other place more secure than in the arms of Jesus. There isn't. And salvation in Jesus cannot happen, cannot be seen as um, a child's play. A house on a tree is more geared towards uh, gameplay where the children go and stay there. But salvation in Jesus is something real. The project of God to save man has to be seen and uh, lived and accepted as a reality because our life is real. It doesn't exist any way for man to escape from it. Child, adult, elder, it doesn't exist. When the, when the time comes when God calls us, when it is our end, we need to be ready. And the only way for us to be sheltered is when we run from for towards Jesus' arms. There's no other way, there's no other place for us to be other than in the presence of Jesus. So here's this word. It may be for this adolescent, but also can be for you as well, who are playing with God, who is living your life uh, recklessly. You hear the voice of God, you see the glory of God, but you're not turning and not Give yourself to the word of Jesus. Be careful because the storm always comes. Trials, they always come. But there is a safe shelter for you. This shelter is Jesus. Amen. The Lord also shown a woman that entered here. And during the day, she has spoken um, to the Lord. And today, she made a remark, I wanted to uh, God to speak to me. She was even speaking to someone. She was telling this to someone. Uh, I wanted God to speak to me during this service. And God now tells you, my daughter, I heard your request. I'm speaking to you because I'm the one who knows you. I'm the one who is 24 hour a day taking care of you. So tonight the Lord is just confirming what he feels for you because God loves your life before you chose to serve him before you chose to be in his presence he had already chosen you before you chose to love Jesus he already loved you he was already loving you and tonight um, we leave this message from the part of the Lord he's taking care of your life and you need to give yourself uh, up to him completely. Give your heart to, to Jesus. Don't allow any part. Uh, because there is no other Savior but Jesus. The Lord has shown during the service. The Lord has shown an army of angels. That together with the church and the praise group would sing songs. To, uh, of praises to the Lord. That's what God does. Every time we, we gather and we gather in the name of Jesus, He sends His angels. And the angels of the Lord, they are message, messengers from God. And they bring answers to our prayers. So the service was a special service. God, because God tonight, He's blessing your life in a very special way what you place in God's altar, what you have placed in God's altar. God, tonight, He m may have answered your prayer. And you may be able to uh, tell in the next few days you will be a witness of the power of God in your life. Amen. Let us pray finishing the service. And if you desire after the prayer, you, we can still go towards you. If you still have a, a doubt, uh, a special necessity we are here at your disposal to give assistance in the name of Jesus pray for you and you will receive a complete blessing from God Lord Father we want to praise your name and ask that your word may remain in our hearts may the seed 
produce, uh, become, uh, germinate, they become, uh, produce fruits and fruit for the glory of your name and that we may collect victories throughout this week and we have ministration of the angels on our behalf, removing the barriers, the obstacles, and b giving us victories in your name and that we may always be in your presence being concerned with our salvation and being zealous for what you have given us which is uh, our positions kings and priests because our royal crown nobody will take away from us because what we have received from the Lord may remain in our hearts take us home in peace is a prayer that I s we say in the name of Jesus in your name we say the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts and the consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may sit down, take their own, your own seats. The praise group be singing softly together with the church and if you want a s an assistance we're here at your disposal. You may raise your hand. Arrest someone, somebody beside you to raise their hand. The workers and deacons are going to go towards you to pray for our life.